So here we are folks with Rise Calendar and I want to explore some of the features, give you a better idea in this deep dive of this calendar application. My name is Francesco, I'm very excited to dive into this feature. We've been extensively digging into this, so if you want to, you can find a full outline of this productivity app on Toolfinder, which you can go to and find the link in description and naturally discover it further. So as you can see here, um, first things first, this application is beautifully designed um, and it's also very snappy. I've tried a couple of calendar applications recently and this is probably one of the faster of the selection, which is really good. I've had no issues even in the beta that I'm currently testing. So if you do see some errors, then naturally this is why. I'm going to show you a few features that give you an idea of how the application works. Now. First things first, this application wants you to be better focused. So you can use this as a solo calendar or you can invite other people to your calendar that are in your team. So when you create an event, what's really nice is you have three types of events. Flexible, which means that a little arrow or a little bolt comes next to it. This basically means that you can have a flexible time window to complete this in, which is ideal because if, for example, it doesn't happen, um, or you just you know feel like you need to have something more important there, it's going to move around based on that. So for example, if you want it within the day, you can have that or within the week as well. And that's really up to you on what you choose. So you can set the time filter here. Now this is beneficial if you've got lots of stuff going on and you, you're like, okay, this meeting's important, but if things come up that are definitely more prioritized, then this can, this can be the thing that changes or be adaptive. The next thing is normal, which is just what you regularly see as an event, and you can add event title here, event participants, the details, and repeat, as well as a video call in which you can set up with Zoom, Google Meet, and add custom links if you want to. There's a location and notes, but there's nothing much more than that in terms of details. You don't need much more than that in the calendar, in my experience, but you've got rescheduling as well if you want to postpone that meeting that has been created. So let's take a little look at um, how it operates. So for example, this is the meeting here. Um, and if I have, uh, this one is one that I've got booked later today, but it actually won't move it because it is a normal event unless it's something that clashes later. So I'm going to show you very briefly, if I go to GS, um, this is settings. Another notable thing, you get reduced motion which you don't need if you're on an M1 or more, in my opinion. So this is how you can manage those flexible um, events. You can set whether this is a flexible um, new one-on-ones or internal meetings and what default that is set at. You can also set focus guard. This is probably the, one of their like flagship features. So for example, it says in the morning when I have 16 hours of um, uh, focus time less a week. Um, and what it does is once that's switched on, It'll block out time on your calendar and make that busy so that no one books a meeting with you. This is really nice because it gives an indication of, right, what is important time for you? And you can see that in my calendar. It's really blocked out by this little line, which is really nice. So if you're looking to find a way to make back more meeting time for you, then that's how you do it. And if you go to GS, oops, sorry, GS, then you can go and find it in settings here. You can change this as well if you want to, so that this pops up in, if you're using Google Calendar, then this pops up and indicates that. And you can even leave a little note if you want to. So as you can see, this is probably quite extensive, but you can really narrow it down to one hour if you did want to. There is a feature called Flexible Event. Oh, I've showed you that, scheduling link, sorry. So for example, this is my 30 minute scheduling link, I can have this externally set so that it books out a time. And you can even ignore the focus blocker, uh, focus guard in the booking, which helps you to make sure to uh, even, so for example, if somebody books that time in there, it can reallocate, so that's quite helpful. And this is what it looks like externally. It looks very similar to the other ones, so you can book a time there. Next thing as well is the ability, if I go back, to book one-on-one -on -one meetings. So if I press Charlotte here, who works with us, I can find a suggested time, 60 minute meeting, and it brings up some brilliant times to do that. Notice there's a few things that it's going to do. Um, it's gonna try and batch my meetings so that I'm in that meeting mode. 
Um, this is quite nice as well, where it brings it quite close to this one. Although I'm not sure whether there's any settings for buffer time, because I think buffer time is quite important, maybe five, 10 minutes. But this is quite neat, uh, being able to book that. And it will try to avoid with my focus time, making sure that in case it needs to book that in the morning, it's keeping away from it. So that's how I book a meeting with somebody in my team. The other thing as well is if you want your availability to be found, for example, you want um, your 30 minute link to find, um, then you can actually um, just quickly find your availability here, which is quite cool. Um, so if I go to share specific times, you can find some specific times and add them to this list here. So that's quite neat. And there's also a meeting one up here. So for example, if I went uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, and uh, this week, uh, actually, I think if I set it to maybe 25 minutes within the next two weeks, it's gonna show some recommended times and it found a decent one, Monday the 2nd. So that's quite a neat meeting if you want to just send an invite pretty instantly. It'll create a Google Meet because it knows we use Google Meet and I've actually set that within settings. So if I go to settings um, and I go to rooms and contacts, it's actually accessing meetings rooms as well. This is great for Teams. And here's my Google Calendar connection as well when it comes to there. Now, there are some neat functions like a command bar. If you press command K, you can narrow it down. And there are some abilities with the week view. I really like four day view. I'm very weird, but this is a way to do that. You can show and hide weekends if you want to and show and decline uh, declined events as well. So other things, um, let me show you around if there's anything. You can add Google Calendar at the moment if you want to add additional calendars. I'm not sure whether they're planning to add Outlook. I didn't see it. But in terms of the pricing, it's a little bit steeper if you're looking for the, the, the bigger pricing. Like for euros, $20, 20 euros per month per seat. But you get five members free and there's pretty good access here as well, which is really good. So that's what I recommend is um, taking the free plan, obviously getting to know the application and, and really getting started. Other elements of this, you can um, narrow down working hours, which is quite cool. So this is quite good if you want forced lunchtime. This will create a 30 minute slot on your calendar and moves between 11.30 and 12.30 or whatever you set it to within an hour to Re resolve conflicts which is quite good so you can really adapt this to what works best for you um, other aspects up here you can find um, when how many meetings you have over time and it will give you team analytics to break down how you're spending your time effectively you can right click and change the icon uh, or the, the color and also reschedule from here too you can duplicate and delete as well so in terms of other details, if I have this meeting here, I can see all the event details. It was booked. I can join it instantly. And as you can see, it's all accepted as the status as well on that on my end. So all in all, this application is really neat. It provides a really clean, fast way to manage your calendar. And to be honest, with up to three, uh, up to five members accessing this for free, that's pretty good. If you don't want to use it as a team, it's a great solo calendar application because you can bring in, if you're using Google Calendar, the best setups as well, and even bring in contacts so that you're saving time too. So really interesting calendar application that's just been released by Rise. Let's dig into it a little bit deeper uh, in Tool Finder. So if you're on a hunt for more productivity tools or you're not sure on Rise Calendar, then you can check out more calendar apps that we have on Tool Finder. Thank you very much, folks, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio.